I've often said that to be an elite athlete of any kind, or specifically an elite runner, uh, you need to choose your parents very carefully. My dad's side of the family has been huge into wrestling, like multiple time state champs, and my mom got into running. I've run a total of 49 half and full marathons. There's definitely a lot of athletic genes that we've gotten. There's a huge genetic component in being great, probably in anything, but specifically athletically and in particular distance running. I think anyone can become competent at distance running, but to become super elite, you need to have the right DNA. So when Bryce and I were dating, he had informed me of the unusual amount of cancer that had been in his family up to that point. And it did concern me, but I guess I was naive and I just told myself, oh, well, if he ever gets cancer, like there'll be a cure by then, or um, nothing bad will ever happen to us. If when you're just young and naive, you kind of don't believe that anything bad will ever happen to you. They didn't want us to get the gene and die early from cancer, just like a lot of my family had. So they did in vitro. They ended up implanting three. So I got identical twin boys and then a girl. The summer after fourth grade, he was getting like a bunch of like lumps and rashes everywhere. And he was really tired. And he kept going to the doctor and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then one day, I think my mom and my dad were walking into the hospital and my dad just passed out. He was diagnosed with leukemia and they did a lot of chemotherapy and they got him ready for a bone marrow transplant. About 75 days after the bone marrow transplant, he started having a lot of bone pain. And they did a bone marrow biopsy at that time and they found that the, the cancerous cells had come back and this was very unusual because they were expecting to not even have to do another bone marrow biopsy or, or risk finding any cancer cells for one to two more years, at least. I feel like that day was harder than the day he died because that was the day that we had to give up all hope. death in our family was like weirdly normal. This like impending doom feeling just, I knew it was always gonna happen and I didn't know when. We were kind of expecting it, like expecting our dad to get cancer eventually. So it wasn't really a surprise when it happened, but it was kind of like my stomach dropped and I was like, oh crap, like it's happening. Like I still wasn't really ready for it. Before Bryce had lost consciousness, I had made him a few promises. Bryce really wanted me to be strong for the kids and to keep them motivated to, to keep doing their sports and to find things to be happy about. This is my life now, and I have to somehow make the best of it and show my kids that we can still find reasons to smile and be happy. After my dad passed away, obviously it's like the hardest thing. It almost doesn't feel real. I think I learned a lot from it because I just learned how to get through hard times and to know that that's a part of life. Watching him battle for eight months in the hospital was really hard. And I knew how much he suffered and he's doing it for us. I knew that like I needed to make the most out of my life and every day because you never know when you're not going to be there. And I also just wanted to make him proud. So my triplets kind of like delved into their sports like full force. That's what I feel helped them the most to get through Bryce's death. Sometimes I'll say I'm doing my gymnastics for him because it was like a huge turning point in my life. And I think it did make me work harder too because I know that that's what he would have wanted. Sage became an All-American her freshman year at Nationals on the Uneven Bars at the University of Utah. 
Sage has, I feel like, a lot of the time been better at her sport respective to us. So I think that motivated me and having to work really hard and knowing that she had done it, it's like, okay, well, now we have to do it. Davin and Creed became All-Americans their sophomore year during cross-country nationals. It was the same calendar year, so it was 2022 that all of them became All-Americans. Maybe I helped put that in their mind or help motivate them. Even if I had it, they're the most hardworking people I've ever met and they always push me to work harder. I mean, it was life as they knew it. They were going to go out and do the things that they wanted to. Their mother was very positive and, and supportive in terms of the good life that they could lead. I think it was a no fear sort of environment where, hey, let's go out and do the things that we we know that we can do, and we get this opportunity of life, let's make the most of it. I look up to them so much as their mom. With everything that they've been through during their lives, you would never know it. You'd just think these are the happiest, sweetest, most disciplined, respectful kids with such good morals. They're really good friends, they're really loyal, and the athletic achievements that they've accomplished are actually just icing on the cake. What I'm most proud of is just who they are and what they've overcome to get there.